Hello, welcome to GCSE Computer Science. My name is Mrs. Spellman. We are studying J277, and that is with the OCR exam board. In this video, I'm going to give you an overview of the course and we're going to get started. I hope you enjoy it. So here's an overview of the course. There are two papers to be taken at the end of year 11. The first paper is worth 50% and it is the computer systems theory. You might want to pause the video to have a look through these topics, but I'm gonna move quickly on to paper two, which is the computational thinking, algorithms, programming. And also there is a final component, but that's not weighted for any percentage. The exam board still requires to do this, but of course we need to. We need to work on programming problems in order for you to develop your skills for paper two. So this component will be me giving you programming problems to do throughout the course. Okay, we're gonna get started on systems architecture. So systems architecture has got three subtopics and we're starting on the first one, which is 1.1.1, architecture of the CPU. Have a look at the topics here, maybe pause the video and see how familiar you are or not with these topics before we get ready to learn. So if you fill out your tickets in your book, in your green book, just on these different topics and how you feel at the moment your knowledge is. Right, I'm, you might want to pause the video for a minute now also just to think how would you describe a computer system? So computer system takes input. So for example, the keyboard here allows us to input data. So does the mouse. Computer system processes that input. Now inside this box here, there will be a CPU doing the processing. And a computer system allows us to output the information. That's a result of that processing. It needs to use storage while it does this. And again, the storage in this diagram here would be inside that box. So I didn't mention that also a computer system is made up of hardware software. The hardware is the um, things that you can touch and feel. So for example, the monitor, the mouse and so on. And the software are the instructions inside the programs. So that's the software. So a computer system takes input, processes it and produces output and it uses storage to do this. This is a diagram that we're going to use a lot in this course, so you do need to get familiar with this. And here it is as a definition to take down in your green books. So you might want to pause the video to do that. So there's an abstract picture here of a CPU. It's a central processing unit, and its purpose is to perform the fetch decode execute cycle. So the central processing unit is carrying out the fetch decode execute cycle over and over. Here's a diagram of the fetch decode execute cycle. So an instruction is fetched from memory. It, the CPU then decodes that instruction, so work out, works out what do I need to do here? And it carries out the instruction. This process is repeated over and over. So here is a diagram for you and also the definition of what we just discussed. So important words are underlined there for you. Architecture is a word I've used a few times now, and I wonder if you've looked it up in a dictionary or looked it up online or if you're already very comfortable with the word. I've done that and there's lots of definitions out there. What I like is the one that says it's the art of design and that design can be the design of a building, but it could also be the design of a computer or anything else. On your screens in front of you, you can see a picture of Jean von Neumann and all the way back in 1945, he designed a computer model. He designed it, he didn't build it. So it's like he gave us the blueprint and that is the model that we study at GCSE. So we are studying 
the von Neumann model. And this diagram depicts what it looks like. So we've got our input and our output, as we've seen, and our memory here. The memory in the John Voinman model contains data and instructions. And this red box here is showing us the components of the CPU. And we're going to take each one of those in, terms, in turn and discuss what they are about. So the arithmetic logic unit, that does any calculations that are necessary or any logical comparisons. So an instruction that's been executed may need some sort of calculation done. It's been carried out in the ALU. The control unit is actually managing the whole fetch decode execute cycle. It's making sure everything is where it needs to be and at the right time. So if an instruction needs to be fetched, it's making sure that is happening. If something needs to be written to memory, you know, everything will be in the right place. The memory data register will actually hold the data. The memory address register will have the address of where it needs to be written. And the control signal that will be sent will be a right signal. So the control unit manages the fetch execute cycle. It manages the movement of data and signals around the computer. And it reminds me a bit like a conductor in, a, in an orchestra. That's what it, what it reminds me of. Registers. Now, registers are the fastest memory in the architecture that we will discuss. So they're tiny little memory locations inside the CPU. And at GCSE, we learn about four registers. They all have specific functions, and we're going to learn about that. So registers are very fast memory locations inside the CPU. They have a specific purpose. Right, so on the registers, let's start with the accumulator. So the accumulator contain, can contain a value. And if there is an instruction such as add five, what that means is add whatever is in memory location five, to whatever is in the accumulator. So in this example, 10 is in memory location 5. So 10 will be added to 6, which will give 16. So once the ALU has carried out this calculation, it will put 16 into the accumulator. And that's why we say the accumulator stores the results of the processing of the ALU. <clears throat> Program counter. Now, the program counter, again, contains every, every one of these registers is there. It contains something. It stores something. That's the purpose to store. So the, the program counter stores an address. And the address that it has is the address of the next instruction to be fetched. It's, it's not correct to say the program counter increments. So a lot of people give me that as an answer, but that's not correct. Certainly, after an instruction has been fetched successfully from memory, the program counter will be incremented. That is true. But the program counter's purpose is to store the address of the next instruction to be fetched. And once it's done that successfully, the value inside the program counter is incremented by one. So one is added to it. And um, that's the program counter. Memory address register. So this also contains an address. And sometimes the CPU needs to write something into a location in memory. Sometimes it needs to read something from a location in memory. The memory address register will store the address that is being manipulated by the CPU. So the memory address register stores the address of a location in memory that will be read from or written to by the CPU. The memory data register then, well, that stores whatever data is about to be written to memory or is about to be read or has, sorry, or has just been read from memory. Now that could be data or it could be an instruction. When instruction is fetched, it's actually put into the memory data register. When data is fetched, that's put into the memory data register. If something needs, the CPU needs to write some data into a location in memory, that first goes into the memory data register. 
cache. Cache is another type of storage. It's very fast memory inside the CPU. It's not as fast as the registers. Still, it is very fast. And it's quite small, and there are three levels of it. And depending on the implementation of the hardware, some of that cache might actually not be inside the CPU. You know, level three might be outside. But what's important for you to know is that cache is much closer to the to, to the, basically the control unit or the core of the CPU than other memory such as RAM. So it's very close memory and it's also very fast. And what the operating system is doing, so we will learn about the operating system in another part of the course, the operating system manages memory and it's trying to get the data and instructions that will be needed soon, it's trying to get those data and instructions into cache. It can't fit many in data or instructions in there, but it's trying to get the ones that will be needed next in there to improve the performance of the CPU. So the CP, the cache then contains the data and instructions most likely to be needed next by the CPU. It is very fast memory. And looking here, we've got level one, which is the closest to the core of the CPU. And it is also the smallest and it's the fastest. And then we've got level three, which again is very fast compared to RAM, but that's further away and not as fast as level one. Right, so we've learned now a little bit about the fetch decoder execute cycle. We've learned a little bit about what's going on inside the CPU, and we've learned what the special registers are for. So what I'm now gonna try and do is map the purpose of the registers to what's going on inside of the CPU. So we're going into a bit more detail now of the CPU, of the fetch decode execute cycle. So in when an instruction has been fetched, the program counter has the address of the next instruction that needs to be fetched, and that's copied to the memory address register. The instruction is fetched from memory, and that instruction is put into the memory data register. The value in the program counter is increased by one. Then we go to the decode phase of the cycle and the control unit decodes the instruction. It works out, what am I supposed to be doing with this instruction? So an example would be add five, or it would work out, oh, so we've got to get whatever value is in location five and add it <clears throat> to the accumulator. And then finally, this instruction is carried out. So again, we'll use the same example. So five is copied to the memory address register because remember the CPU will now need to go and fetch whatever is in location five. The data that's fetched is going to be put into the memory data register. And then the ALU will actually do the calculation of adding what's just been taken from the MDR and that's going to be added to whatever it was already in the accumulator. So in the previous example, I think we might have had six in the accumulator and 10 was added. So eventually we got 16 and the that's stored in the accumulator. So that's basically the fetch decode execute cycle, but looking at the registers and what's happening with them alongside. So that's everything for this video. So we have covered quite a lot. We've looked at the fetch decode execute cycle. We've looked at the components of the CPU and we've looked at the purpose of the registers inside the CPU and how that matches back to the fetch decode execute cycle. So now once again, I'm gonna ask you to fill out the little ticket in your book showing how you feel now about this, this material. So take some time to think about, do you now understand it? Have you made some progress? I hope you have. And that's it for our first GCSE video for J277. I hope that you have enjoyed it.